you could design the perfect quarterback coming in and out of high school, what would he look like? What would be what were the most important skills that he needs? Is it football IQ? Is it athletic? Sure, I mean, sure, it's all those qualities. There's a lot of qualities. You know, you got to be mentally and physically tough. Got to have mobility and have arm strength, the ability to process information and think quickly on the fly. I mean, those things have to happen because you got to be able to process what defenses are doing. I'm, I'm really into seeing how, how much our kids or the kids you recruit, how fast they process information. And then we get to know them a little bit more so you know if they can or not and be able to do that in a heated situation. And can they handle this? Can they handle the speed of light? You know, because when you get here, it's multiplied and you're going. It's, it's, a, it's a rapid race. And so, can those kids handle that situation? Sure, we want everybody wants the the Tom Brady's, the you know, everybody wants that type of quarterback, the Peyton Manning's, you know, the Aaron Rodgers. Everybody wants that, but they're all unique in their own special way. They all have special strengths. So it's finding a, a, a young man that fits what you're looking for, has great character. That's important to be successful. That's driven, not motivated. And I think that's so important because motivation comes and goes, but being driven lasts a lifetime. Do you care about? Do you care about height anymore? You, you see, it, it, it's it, you know, it's funny that guys were drafted. I think this past year, where I think average weight height was, I think six two, right about there. You know, six one and three quarters, six two, right in that range. So, you know, I, I think that's it's important sometimes. But I think uh, you know, people get caught up in that. I think it's can a young man can you see through lanes? Yeah, I think that's important. Can you create opportunities or windows of opportunity for himself? And then um, it's just the ability to make plays. I mean, we all want guys to make, to make plays and escape and make plays when they have to and, and extend plays. I think that's important. But, uh, you know, I, I think sometimes you, everybody wants the protocol guy, the 6'4", the 6'3", the 6'2", that can run 4'5". Well, let's, let's be honest, you're not going to find many guys that can do that. But it's finding what they do well and can they fit in your program and they have the character that Coach Jones, want, Coach Jones wants in this program. Yeah. Go right back, Larry Scott, you can count on me. Well, you were at your alma mater whenever, yeah. Yeah, at Utah State, right? Yeah. Whenever you were hired to this position. Mm -hmm. I mean, surely that wasn't an easy decision to leave your sure. you know, place where sure. you played. I mean, how much of a factor yeah. did that relationship? Well, you know, being tied to Larry was something that's, you know, we talk obviously maybe two, two, three times a year. And we always kept that relationship going. And when he called me up and he, you know, he said, looking for a quarterback coach. And, and he said, I know what you've done. I saw him playing your career. And, and um, it, was, it was something that was hard, obviously, because that was my alma mater, obviously. But what a great opportunity to come here and, and be uh, an ambassador for Coach Jones and be an assistant coach for him. And we have not been friends for over 20 years. So it, to me, it was the right thing to do. Prayed about it often. And then just realized, hey, if I get this opportunity, I'm going to take it. And it was the right thing to do. Smith didn't answer this earlier. Coach Jones had mentioned how Jerry Garantano maybe yesterday had his best practice. Mm -hmm. Specifically, did he do well? He, he was really laser focused in his accuracy with sniper accuracy. I mean, he was on point. He was, he was really focused in. And we talked about it before going on the field with quarterbacks about what we wanted for the day, our objectives, our goals. And then I asked him point blank, did you accomplish it? I mean, after practice, we watch film today. Well, did you accomplish your objective? Did you accomplish your goal? And then we challenge them every single day. You know, it's something, something you know, they have to go, you know, just go out and have, not have a plan. We have a heck of a plan. We know what we're going to do on that field. We know what our emphasis is going to be for the day. And we talk about it, you know, and it's openly. So uh, he just it seemed to have, it seemed like it just clicked, you know, and he was on point and he was he was in tune to what was going on. He saw the coverage. He saw what the defenses were doing. And I think sometimes it's, it's a process. You know, it's step A, step B, step B, step C. And I always tell them all the time, you can't go to A to Z. It doesn't happen. you got to take B, C, D steps along the way. And it just something for some reason it clicked. And I've seen it come. I saw it the last couple of days that he's been here. What's the and, uh, I'm sorry, Coach. Uh, being a first-year coach at a place, what's that like? Obviously, this time of year, we we're talking, asking you a lot about freshmen kind of adjusting to it. But you're obviously adjusting to coming to a new city and a new program from a coach's perspective. What's that kind of like? You know, what, what a great town. The community has just been fantastic and wonderful. And I appreciate the all support that they've given us. And, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an honor to be here, and I understand the, the tradition and, and the legacy that's been left here before and the coaches that have coached here and then the players that have come through this program. And I mentioned before, you know, walking in my door and I look up and I see Peyton Manning, his pitcher, and then I see his advice to Josh Dobbs. I know how important this program is, and I know what an important role I have in it, and I'm willing to give it everything I've got for it. And so I'm very honored to be here. It's definitely an honor here. But, you know, there have been great places too, North Carolina State, the New York Jets, University of Arizona. So, you know, that part is the transition's been good for me. I've been in those, that, that role, not as not a position, but as the coordinator and whatnot. So that's been good because because I don't have to worry about 50 guys. I just worry about my five or six guys in my room, and I'm, I'm enjoying that part of it and just helping Larry in any way I can. 
the trust that we have in each other. I think it's so, so important. But uh, I, I love it here. My family loves it here. Uh, I can't wait to get all my kids out here. They're going to come out for the Georgia game, and I'll have the whole canals out here, and it's going to be awesome to have them here. But this has been wonderful. The food's been great. community's been great. People are just friendly as heck. And I uh, hope they stay that way. Yeah. <laughs> Will this offense look like anything? Are there some basis into that South Florida? I mean, you guys had a top five ranked team yes, in South Florida when you yes, and Larry were there. Are there, are there some elements that are going to carry over from when you and Larry were together? I can't tell you our secrets now. No, no. Give you all our secrets, but there'll be some things that I'm sure that Larry will pull and then we'll, we'll look back on and go, these were really good schemes. But Larry went on to University of Miami and got some great ideas too again and been different places. So we're able to you know, bounce ideas off each other. But what we're going to do is what Coach Jones and Coach Scott wants us to do and that's what we're going to do we're going to coach it that way but i believe what we're doing it's going to be exciting and fun i was going to say the collaboration you haven't been well head coach coordinator now larry he's been a head coach butch what's that collaboration been like i mean not to be too much of a fly on the wall but how does it go in there I mean, oh it's awesome we bounce ideas off each other you know obviously the head man has the final call and and he what he says we do i'm i love it i'm i'm, I'm a soldier you know I'm, I'm a guy that wants to buy and i love this thing you know and it's it's what you do, it's loyalty, you know, it's loyalty to him and to this program, this university, and loyalty to Larry, you know, and, and if they say we're going to do this, you, we throw ideas out at each other and it's nothing personal and you just try to make the best of what you got and we're, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take our players and play to their strengths and find whatever we do in terms of offense. Well, I know what we're doing, but in terms of what we're doing, it's going to be good, guys. It's going to be fun. Coach, you, you could just things you have to you mentioned things you have to worry about. In college football, with quarterbacks being so quick to transfer, mm -hmm. how much of a issue or discussion point is that to make sure these guys are happy and they're not having outside influences thinking about bringing them away from program if they don't get a chance to play? Sure. You know, it's it's something that always, in people on the, on the, I'm sure, in the back of people's mind. But I believe there's no greater quarterback coach out there that will coach my guys than me. And I'm honest with you. So you find anybody that coaches you like I do. And they won't find it. And I guarantee they won't find it. Because I give them everything I've got, 110%, every single day. I'm here to develop them and make them the best quarterback that can be at the University of Tennessee. And if, and if God bless them with that opportunity, go on the National Football League. And they know my background. They know I've had guys that have gone on the National Football League. So they trust and believe me. And the way I coach, they will not find it. So we don't talk about that work. <laughs> we just don't talk about it. It's nothing I'm interested in talking about. You know, it's something that, uh, you know, obviously people like to talk about. But I, I'm here to coach those guys because I know this. I'm going to coach them hard. I'm going to coach them fair. But no one's going to love them like I love them. And so, you know, but even if you don't talk about it, it's something that's real. And sure, it's real. Sure, it's real. You see it happen all over the country. Yeah. Well, then you got to make sure that relationship is strong and understand their staff away, whether it's starter or back. they got to be ready to play. And all of them got to be ready to play. What have you picked up on with Butch in terms of sort of his idiosyncrasies and how detail-oriented he is? <laughs> how would you assess just sort of his persona as a coach? I love it. I mean, he's the same way I was when I was interim head coach. Just things that are important that you got to make sure you address every day. It's fun. It's 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 good to come in the office and go, and all of a sudden I go, man, I never heard it that way. I have my you know my coach Butch Jones book that I keep every little thing that he does or says, and I write it down because I think that's important to keep building you. You know, you never I don't never, don't know it all. And I'm constantly wanting to learn, even at where I'm at in my stage of my career. You know, 32 years of coaching, you hear something different, said differently, and may grab a kid differently. So I'm constantly writing those things down. In terms of the sense that he has, you know, he had some, I'll just keep it to myself. But it's fun to go in every day and know that, hey, I got a boss that cares about his players and cares about his staff. And that means a lot to me. Uh, the way he emphasizes positivity and, and things of that nature, I mean, does that rub off? Well, you, you seem like a positive guy, but yeah. does, does his leadership in that regard rub off on the staff? Oh, yeah, you see it every day, the way our guys come out as coaches would come out to coach. I mean, that's what I want to do. I mean, I want to feed off him. I, I feed off his energy. I mean, he comes out, and he's 100%. He's going gangbusters and juiced up in energy. I mean, that's I owe that to him. I owe this to my I owe this to our kids. Let's come out and give it everything I've got. So energy is not one thing I lack, I promise you. I mean, as far as your quarterbacks, two things, I guess. That how important is it for them to have the scrimmage Wednesday? And secondly, about the athleticism of these quarterbacks. I mean, just how much more athletic are they than some of the guys you, you've worked with? Yeah, you know, he, they're both athletic, you know. And, you know, we know that Jarrett can run a little bit. He's got an arm strength and he can throw the ball. And we know that Quentin can really throw the ball. They both can throw the ball very, very well. One's probably a little more, you know, elusive in, in Darius, but Quentin can really, he, he's a big and athletic. He can move a lot better than everybody thinks. And I think that's what people forget. Uh, Philip was was one very wasn't, didn't move very well, but he was tough and he showed grit in the pocket. And he was standing there and finding ways to get the ball out late. I think that was really important for his development. You know, coaching coaching guys like B.J. Daniels at South Florida, he was a guy that was more loose mobility. He would get out, extend plays, make plays with his feet, and do things. So 
I think it's, it's taking what you've got and playing to their strengths and then making sure it fits to what you're doing. I think that's important. And then the scrimmage, is that, is this? Oh, scrimmage is going to be huge. I mean, it's a great chance for the lights are on, and now we're in a live situation where they're going to get hit, I'm sure, and it'll be good for them. They need that part of it. And just sitting there and be able to take a shot and grit up and get, keep going, you know, and I think that's important. Uh, you know, obviously, that it'll be important for Jared. He hasn't been in a live situation in a year, so that'll be good for him. Quentin's been in some games, but sure, it's, it's still understanding that what's at stake and, and, and the pressure and having that pressure on them and being able to go out and can you execute it when the pressure's on you. What are the similarities between coaching here at Tennessee and then coaching at some of the other places that you've been? You know, it, it's coaching's coaching. And if you have a great passion for it and you bring energy and enthusiasm, it's the same thing, regardless if you're coaching junior high, high school, you know, different places. But obviously Tennessee is a premier program. I understand that. But I'm not going to change who I am. My personality, my enthusiasm and passion for this game allows me to coach at the level the way I like to coach. And that. that's coaching the way Coach Jones wants me to coach. And that's doing things that, that way. It's this details, accountability, and toughness. And that's the way I coach every single day. I think that what I think I bring to the table is my enthusiasm and passion and energy in each and every day practice there's never a bad day that's the best day to me that's that's heaven on earth on a practice field you get a chance to work your craft and get better and watch them grow and develop into, into players that you want them to be and get them ready for the when the lights come on because that's what I try to challenge them every single day I try to push them as hard as I can you know so that when the lights come on it's easy you have a long background with Larry Scott just what do you see in him you think will make him an effective coordinator well and just watching his growth as a player and then into it a coach when we work together and then and watching him as you know when, when he was was a player. I mean, he loved football. He was always constantly in the office. He was always coming and asking questions. Uh, I'm not a coordinator. I'm coach. What I need to do? What can I learn here? Why are we doing this? You know, he was constantly grasping and a sponge and everything that we did. And then you saw him as a, as an assistant coach. How much he gravitated to the ball. I mean, he loved talk X's and those. You know, we'd, we'd have to force each other to leave the office late at night sometimes when we were with Coach Levitt at South Florida because we just wanted to keep talking ball and watching film and how can we get better and just watching his growth and then getting back together and seeing where he's come from where he was that to where he is at now, he'll be very successful, there's no doubt. Where's that enthusiasm come from for you? Has it always been it's, it's part of my culture, it's part of who I am, my, the family background, my my father was a military officer, <laughs> officer and, and um, just our work ethic, my mom's work ethic, and, you know, I, the way I look at it, my mom was a, a you know, migrant worker when she was young and they traveled all over the country and picking cotton and picking, you know, watermelon or, or lettuce or whatnot. And my mom never had a bad day. She never complained. It was God's will that that's what she was supposed to do. And and I see the work ethic she has, and I just know that's what is in our blood. I just know that I have a passion for this this life. I have passion for life. I have passion for coaching. I have passion for helping young men develop into great citizens and be ambassadors for this program and ambassadors for this community. And I think it's important that they get the best out of me too. They got to have 100% out of me before I can ask them to come out and be 100%.